<clears throat> okay, so here we have question number 11 from um, summer 2008, paper 2, variant 1, a question which involves a non-right angle triangle. They've told us in terms of x, some of the lengths that are here, and they've told us what are the angles, and they've told us one length as it is without x, um, and they've told us to calculate the value of x. So of course we have to set some of, set up some sort of equation. So we have to ask ourselves, how do these pieces of information in this question, how do they link together? How can I link them together in an equation? Whoops. All right. Now, in order to link them together into an equation, we have to find some way of relating them to each other. So we have here a triangle. It's not right angle, so I can't, for example, say, ah, Pythagoras' theorem links them together. Pythagoras' theorem will only work with right angle triangles. So that one won't work. However, what we do know is that if you have a non-right angle triangle and you know all three sides, which we do in terms of x sum of them, we can find one of the angles from the cosine rule. So you can see that we know this angle is 120 degrees. And we know these sides make the angle. And we know what this length is. So another way of looking at it is we can use the cosine rule to find the missing length if we know two sides and the angle between those two sides. When we know these two sides in terms of x, and we know the angle between these two sides, and we know the side opposite that. So we're thinking, I'm thinking of the cosine rule. The cosine rule will be able to link these pieces of information together into an equation. So the cosine rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cosine a, which you should know. Okay, and you should know how to quote it, you should know how to apply it, which is more important. Now, to apply this, you have to basically realize that this side, a, and this angle, a, have to be opposites to each other. So I'm going to use the 120 degrees and the 21 as my a and my angle a, which in this case they've kindly labeled for us in a friendly manner, okay? Because it could have been that they call this b, a, b, c, in which case you would still take this angle as an angle over here, because it's not the label that matters, it's the concept that matters. So the concept is that when you know an angle and you know um, two sides that make the angle, you can find the opposite side using the cosine rule, and the side opposite the angle that we know is the side which is a subject of the formula of the cosine rule and of course the angle is the angle okay in the in the cosine rule so now let's apply this formula to this situation so i can say 21 squared that's our a equals now b and c doesn't matter which is which but you've got to be very careful when you square them you've got two square two x all of it not just the x the two as well plus x squared Okay, minus 2 times b, which we called, well, it doesn't matter which way you call them. These two can be b and c as you wish, okay? 2 times 2x times x times the cosine of 120. Okay, now, so I'll just leave that as 21 squared for now. 21 squared is equal to, now, when I square 2x squared, I'm going to get 4x squared. 2x times 2x is 4x squared plus x squared minus, and I'm going to have 2 times 2x times x, that's going to give you minus 4x squared. However, it's multiplied by the cosine of 120, which is minus a half. Well, I know it's minus a half, but I will show it to you in case you didn't realize that. It's not something you have to know, but with some experience you'll know that the cosine of 120 degrees, before you actually proceed, make sure it's in degree mode, which it is, equals negative a half. Okay, so that's 4x squared times negative a half. Okay, now remember your bid mass. You can't say 4x squared minus 4x squared. You have to multiply this first before you can subtract it from anything. So you've got 21x squared equals, this is going to give you 5x squared. Then you've got negative times negative is positive. And then you've got 4 times uh, a half is 2. So you end up with 5x squared plus 2x squared equals 21x squared. 21 squared, sorry. So you've got 7, I'm just continue over here. So you've got 7x squared is equal to, okay, 21 squared. Let's just write down what that is. It's going to be 400 and sum it. 
Okay, so you've got 21 squared, which gives you 441. Okay, so that's 441. Okay, so x squared is going to be 441 divided by 7. So 441 divided by 7. Take your calculator, divide the answer we got last by 7. And that gives you 63. So x squared is equal to 63. x squared is equal to 63. Remember, that's x squared. We've got to find x. So x is equal to the square root of 63. Of course, we only want the positive square root because x has to be a positive length. So we're going to take the square root of the answer that we have already in our calculator, which was the last one. And that gives us, to three significant figures, 7.94. So you write down 7.932. I'll write down x equals 7.937. 7.937 dot dot dot. Let me just make sure that I saw that properly. 7.9372 dot dot. Yeah, okay. So then we have to round our answer. Doesn't tell us otherwise. It's an x is a length. Okay, so it's 7.94. 7. 0.94, and there we have our answer. Okay, it's going to be in cent uh, no, x, because it's just x there, centimeters already there. Okay, so it's 7.94, and that is our answer. Okay, and there we go. Thank you for listening.